Hi everybody, I'm Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I want to show you something really fun whether you're a beginner or an intermediate or an advanced crocheter. I'm calling this the Easy Beginners Granny Square Scarf or Shawl. And depending on how many rows you decide to crochet, you can make a nice lovely shawl or you can make this into a scarf. And what's really fun about this project is you don't have to run out and buy any special yarn if you don't want to. You can use yarn that's already in your stash. And this is a fabulous stash buster. Okay, let me show you. This is using a number five weight yarn, but I had some sock yarn in my stash and I made a nice, beautiful scarf. This is self, all of these yarns that I'm showing you are self striping and just yarns that I had waiting and just begging for a project for many, well, many months. Okay, here is another. That was a lot of fun to work up. And again, self striping yarn. And maybe you have some of these and more in your stash already. So this is the time to get them out. All you need to do if you use yarn that's different from what I'm going to show you in the demonstration is just make sure that you have the hook size that is appropriate to the yarn that you use. Well, come on, let me show you what you're going to need. But before we do that, if you could please hit that subscribe button, if you're especially if you're a first time viewer and the thumbs up always blesses me and hit that notification bell if you want to hear about more projects that I have coming your way. For this project, I'm going to be using one cake of Yarnspirations Caron Latte Cakes. And let me give you the stats on this yarn right here. It's a bulky weight or number five right here. And this is 50% acrylic, 42% nylon. The yardage on this particular cake is 530 yards or 485 meters. I'm only going to use one for this project, but if you wanted a longer, wider um, shawl, feel free to add an additional cake to that. Now, if you wanted to um, use a different yarn, you can use any weight yarn for this project. Just be sure that you size up the crochet hook appropriately. Also for this project, using the Caron Cakes yarn, I'm going to be using a size K or 10.5 or 6.50 millimeter crochet hook. And as always, I highly recommend you have a needle, a yarn needle handy, and a pair of sharp scissors. Well, let's go ahead and begin. Okay, to begin, we're going to go ahead and start with a slip knot, which we're going to I'll work this very slowly for you in case there are some true beginners out there. Let me go ahead and pull the little tail and tighten up this knot a little bit. Now before I go any further, let me just say that if you're an absolute beginner and have never crocheted before, look in the video description below. I have some excellent beginning tutorials that I recommend that you watch before you start this project. Okay, so now we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four and we're going to work a slip stitch in the first stitch of the of the chain so that we can form a small circle. And the way we do this is we stick the hook in, pull the loop through, and pull the loop through without wrapping. And you should make, have formed a little cheerio or a little donut here. We're gonna chain three. One, two, three, and we're gonna work working into that big hole, the center of the little donut seed there, we're going to work two double crochets. Let me back that up a little bit. So to make a double crochet, wrap the hook, stick it into the middle of this circle, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. And that's basically the stitch that we're going to be working throughout this entire project. Yarn over, insert, Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now in this case, let me slow down here, um, the chain three is actually an imitation double crochet. It has the same height as the double crochets and from a distance it pretty much looks the same. So we're going to make this our acting double crochet and in a lot of crochet patterns. The chain threes are often counted as double crochet. So just I'll throw that out there to you. So you want to be careful 
um, if you're really into big stitch counts and everything, that you watch the pattern requirements there. Okay, now we're going to chain two, one, two, and we're going to do three double crochets worked into that same circle, right into the middle. One, two, I'm just doing double crochets here, and three. Okay, so this is row one. That is completed. That's the fastest row of this project. From this point on, each row is just going to get longer as we go. And let me say one more thing before I go any further. If I am crocheting too quickly for you, I have a solution. If you look down along the bottom of the screen here, there's a little gear-shaped icon. If you click on that, it will bring up a playback speed and you can select a slower speed. Um, it's going to be on this side for the left-hand version of this video. Now, up in the upper right-hand corner, if you're watching from a cell phone, you'll see three vertical dots. If you click on that, it's going to be on this side for the left-handed version. Uh, if you click on those three dots, it's going to bring up also a playback speed, and you can change the speed. You can make it slower so that you can really understand me, or you can click a faster speed, and speed me up if that keeps you from getting too bored. So I hope that serves you well. Round two, we're going to actually let's go ahead and turn first. And then we're going to chain three. One, two, three. So after we've chained three, we're going to work two double crochets into the first stitch. I know it's a little tricky to see with all this fuzzy yarn, but I think uh, if you just look right here, and you see where there's like a V here at the top of each stitch. We're just putting it under both strands of that V. And we're going to do two double crochets. And again, the reason we do two double crochets is because this chain actually acts as a third double crochet. Then we're going to chain one. And now, we're going to work in the chain two space here. This is actually the corner and we're going to work a corner which consists of three double crochets just worked right in that big open space there. Chain two, one, two, and then three more double crochets. One, two, and three. Let's pause. After that we do a chain one. And then now we have the first stitches that we worked. We're going to work right in this chain three space and we're going to work three double crochets. One, two, three. Okay, let's go ahead and stop and see what we have. So even at this point, you should be able to see a pretty well-defined triangle. And this is what we're going to just continue to grow throughout this entire project. So we're going to chain, let's go ahead and turn, chain three, one, two, three. And just like we did the last row, we're going to work two double crochets working under that those two loops of that first stitch. One two, and I know this is redundant, but just for the sake of learning, the reason we only do two is because this chain acts as an additional stitch. Chain one, and now this is where the real pattern begins. In between every chain one space throughout this project, you're going to work three double crochets. This is a, those three clusters that, that are um, very common to the granny square style um, prop projects. Okay, after that we chain one. Now whenever you get to this corner, make sure that you're paying attention that, that when you work around this project, that when you get to this corner where there are those two sets of clusters, go ahead and do another corner, make another corner, which is three double crochets chain two, not one, but chain two for the corner, and then three more 
double crochets one two and three let's pause and take a look at that okay so chain once in between these but when you get to that corner make sure you do a chain two and then we're back to chain one and three double crochets worked in that next chain one space one thing I like about this type of pattern is you don't have to worry about working in through the top loops very much at all and that makes it much more beginner friendly in my personal opinion okay so now we're going to chain one and now we get to the other end and worked right in that chain three space we're going to work another cluster of three double crochets two three and I know you can't feel this yarn but this feels amazing this is so much softer than it probably looks um, first time using this yarn but I'm really enjoying the journey so far so let's go ahead and turn now this is going to be starting row four chain three and just like we've done in the other rows two double crochets worked in those top two strands you see that just like we've already done chain one and three double crochets worked in that chain one space and again chain one and then three double crochets worked in that next chain one space chain one and now we've come to the corner and you know one thing you can do especially as this project gets larger and larger and larger it'd be really easy to make a mistake here and I and the reason I tell you this is I have done this mistake many times working granny squares well, I'll get to the corner and I'll only do three stitches what you can do to remind yourself is use a little stitch marker something like this and if you don't have that they have some other types that are like this and you know what and if you don't have a fancy little stitch marker, if you have a safety pin, safety pins work. And if you don't even have to say, have a safety pin, use a piece of yarn that's a contrasting color and just tie a little, a little reminder there, kind of like tying a, a bow around your finger so that when you get to that point, I'm going to, you know, th that tells you that, okay, you need to do something different here. So now that I, I'll just remove it when I get to that point. And I'll go ahead and do my something different, which is the corner, which in this case is going to be three double crochets. Remember, chain two for the corner and then three more double crochets, two, three. And then as a reminder, I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this right back in that space just so that when I come around the next row that I don't forget to put this corner in the corner chain one and now we just work three double crochets in the next chain one space chain one let's get some more yarn pulled off the scan for us three more double crochets in that next space chain one and this is the last stitch so we just work those three double crochets in that chain one space one two three sorry about the noise my little stitch marker there is hitting the camera okay so now this is what we have after four rows isn't that nice this is going to be so much fun to work now I'm going to do one more row with you and you're going to essentially do what I've just shown you throughout the entire project until you run out of yarn or until you make the shawl or the scarf as large as you would like it to be chain three and I'm going to do two double crochets in that first stitch again this is the only time that you really work 
inside the actual stitches. Most of the most of this is going to be working in the chain one spaces. Okay, chain one, three, double crochets in that next space, two, three, chain one, and then three double crochets in the next chain. And you'll notice that with each row, we're going to be adding two clusters to the row. So these rows are going to grow kind of rapidly at first. Chain one, and then the next chain one space, three more double crochets. This yarn is so smooth, it really does make crocheting easy. Chain one. Ah, now we've come to our stitch marker. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And you know what the stitch marker means? It means that we've come to our corner. So we work two double crochet, I'm sorry, three double crochets. One, two, three, chain two, and then three more double crochets. One, two, three chain one, then working in the chain one spaces again, three double crochets, let's get some more yarn, I think this yarn is going to feel pretty amazing, but that said, feel free to use any yarn and any, just make sure you put the correct crochet hook to the size yarn, okay, chain one, and double crochet, three, three double crochets in the next chain one space. One, two, three, chain one, three double crochets in that next space. And then we get to the, the last stitch, stitches of the row, chain one, and in the last stitches we just do three double crochets okay let's take a look one two three four five that's after five five rows if this is a fast grower okay so now what I'm going to suggest you do is just continue working in the same pattern stitch until you reach the size that you would like your shawl or your scarf to be and I'm going to work several more of these rows. I'm going to be working on this for a while. Then I'll show you my progress as I come along. I've continued working this for several rounds. And I just wanted you to see how beautiful this is looking. And this self-striping yarn is a lot of fun to watch as each row unfolds. So I just wanted to go ahead and show you. And the edging is very straight. So this is really, really a fun project. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue this until I just about use up all of my yarn and then I'll show you what I have. Okay, I've come to the end of my 33rd row and this is all the yarn that I have left and I am pretty sure that that's not enough for another row. So I'm gonna go ahead and fasten off with the chain and gonna give that a tug. And you know what, I'm gonna do that two times on this yarn because it has a slippery quality to it. And since this yarn, go ahead and clip that there. Since this yarn um, is very fuzzy and it's gonna be very easy to hide that, I feel comfortable making two chains just to add a little bit of security. I'm gonna give you a really quick tutorial here on how to hide the this loose thread. Okay, so we're gonna just thread it into our yarn needle. And I highly recommend that you have some of these in your supplies because these are absolutely wonderful. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and it really doesn't matter where you hide this because this project is completely reversible. So I'm going to just hide this into the stitches. I'm just kind of winding it down a little bit this direction. There we go. And I'm going to run it underneath the gray colored yarn just like that. 
And since I want to stay within the gray color yarn, I'm going to go up into the next stitch. And I'm going to do a little more. I'm just going to weave it down into the next cluster. See what I did there? I just wove it kind of up in around that chain and down and around. Nobody's ever going to see this, especially with the fuzziness of this yarn. Now, if you're using a, a, a yarn that's all one color, you can just go down into the stitches. You don't have to do what I just did there. But I just like to give it a little extra added assurance. Okay, and then I pull back a little bit just to make sure that that stitch is not, or that the strand is not real tight. And then very carefully, I'm going to cut the stitch. I'm sorry, cut the, the strand, rather. And careful not to cut the stitch or your work there. So that ends this project. Let me go ahead. I'm going to give you a quick little view here, and then I'll show you what it looks like in just a second. Now I have one other strand to hide. And that was the very beginning strand. And that is it. So once I hide that, I will be done with this project. And give you an idea how these colors came out so beautifully. And as I mentioned before, you can use any size yarn for this project. And you can make as many or as few rounds as you'd like. Um, you can use real skinny yarn like sock yarn or weight number one or two or three DK weight yarn. Or you can use your regular um, acrylics that you find in your big box stores. And even some bulky yarn like I used here. This is, a, like I said, a number five weight yarn. And it crochets up more like a number four, like a thick four. But um, very, very fun to work with. Well, I hope you enjoyed making this project with me today. If you did, please hit that thumbs up. That would really bless me. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. God bless you all. Bye-bye. <music>